Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. And today we are diving into the exciting world of Omni Studio. So why should you invest your time in mastering Omni Studio? I recently discussed this in detail in another video. So if you haven't caught it yet, I highly recommend checking this out. I've left the link in the description below. So today we'll be going over Omni Studio architecture. I'll be using Cafe Analogy to help you grasp the concept of three layers of Omni Studio architecture. I'll also be doing a quick dive into each of the tools with quick demos and walkthrough, including data raptors, integration procedures, flex cards, Omni scripts, and business rule engines. So with this, let's get into it. Let's imagine something familiar, a cozy cafe called Omni Cafe. So this cafe has three areas, the dining area, the kitchen area, and the warehouse. On each table, there is a menu and also a self-serve kiosk to order your meals and coffee. Back in the kitchen, there are chefs and head chefs and appliances like robotic arms that prepares ingredients for the chefs and in the warehouse there is both written recipes and secret recipes. Now keep this analogy in mind, we'll now use this analogy to describe the three layers of Omni Studio architecture. So Omni Studio architecture contains three layers. First layer is digital experience followed by service management and developer experience. In digital experience, there are two components, FlexCard, OmniScript, Data Raptor integration procedure and business rule engine for the service management layer, IDX build tool and IDX workbench for the developer experience layer. So it's important to know when to use these components. I'll be doing a deep dive into each of these in the upcoming weeks. So please subscribe and stay tuned. So let the fun begin. Let's link the cafe analogy with Omni Studio and these components. So Omni Studio is like the Omni Cafe. It's the overall container for the three layers below. So starting with the digital experience layer. The digital experience layer is the user interface layer or the front end similar to the dining area or front of the house where the guests are greeted by cafe staff. This digital experience layer contains two user interface components, FlexCard and OmniScript. So FlexCards are used to display contextual information and actions. It's very similar to a restaurant menu where it displays all the dishes and drinks you can order. Flex cards display data only and they don't take user inputs. For example, a flex card showing the weather information and buttons to show detailed information. So this is what a simple flex card uh, looks like. You can insert pictures, text, getting data from both internal of Salesforce and external data source as well. You can have buttons that never get to a website or another button to launch another flex card or an Omni script. In this case, it, launch, it launches another child flex card that displays the weather forecast. So coming up next is the Omni script. Omni scripts are used when you need to walk people through a process step by step, a guided path to complete a business process and you need inputs from the user like an application form to sign up for an insurance plan for example. So Omniscript is all about capturing information. So this is very similar to a self-serve kiosk in the cafe example where the cafe guests would order food on the kiosk touch screen confirm what they have ordered and make payment and receive an order number. 
this is what a simple OMI script would look like. So this is an application form to apply for a salon. Over here you have different steps for the application. And here you have all the questions that is on the form. There's different questions and branching logic depending on what you selected, different questions will appear. When you click next, it goes to the next step. And in the end, you can agree for the terms and conditions. Once it's done, it would generate records in Salesforce. Service management layer. So it includes data services that read, write, transform, calculate, and track data within and outside Salesforce. So this is the backend. This is similar to a kitchen, back of the house, in a cafe, where all the food is prepared and cooked and is not visible to the user or the cafe guest. So this is everything that happens in the background. It contains three components, Data Raptor, Integration Procedure, and Business Rule Engine. You will use Data Raptor to configure services for retrieving, transforming, and updating data. It's very similar to a chef in the kitchen that prepares the food and ingredients. So there are four types of Data Raptors, Turbo Extract, and Extract. If you are familiar with flow, it's very similar to the get element. And if you are familiar with Apex, these are like your so-called queries. Besides Turbo Extract and Extract, you also have Data Raptor Load. And in flow, it's very similar to the update and create element. In Apex, it's very similar to DML statements. And the last type of Data Raptor is Data Raptor Transform. This is a special Data Raptor that can transform the JSON data. We won't get into this into too much detail here. I'll be covering this in the Data Raptor Overview video. I'll link it in the description below when it's ready, so stay tuned and subscribe. So this is a simple example of Data Raptor Turbo Extract. Over here we are fetching all the contact records where the first name contains JO and it will return the details of these four these five fields. And over here we can see it's returned to records. John and Josh. And these are the respective fields that we have specified here. In the debug log, you can actually see the details of the query here. Moving to integration procedure. It's a declarative server-side process that execute multiple actions in a serv single server call. So it's used for complex procedures. You can call Apex classes, external APIs. You can call other integration procedures or data raptors or make HTTP callouts. In the cafe analogy, it's like a head chef because it oversees complex processes in the kitchen and it directs the chef or the robotic arm what to do. If you are familiar with flow, an integration procedure is like your entire flow but not quite as integration procedures can execute multiple actions in a single server call. And if you are familiar with Apex, integration procedures is, is like writing an Apex class and Apex methods. This is what a simple integration procedure looks like. This integration procedure calls 
another data raptor extract and extracts the account and contact details based on the account ID supplied. So if we look at this particular data raptor, we'll be able to see that it's getting information from the account and contact and it's outputting all of these fields. So coming back to the integration procedure, we can actually see that there's a lot more actions that you can do with this. You can make HTTP action callouts, remote actions, so calling Apex. You can delete, you can call other data raptors and integration procedures. I'll cover this in another video, so make sure to subscribe and stay tuned. So in the preview, um, we've given an account ID and when we hit the execute button we can see the account and all the associated contacts with all the fields that was specified in the OMI Studio data raptor that was called as part of the integration procedure here. Let's now have a look at business role engine when would you use Business Role Engine? You would use it when you need to apply advanced logic and automate complex decision making. For example, complex calculations, fees based on multiple inputs, eligibility based on multiple criteria. So it's very similar to the robotic arm analogy in the cafe where it performs complex actions to prepare prepackaged food for the head chef. So Business Rules Engine is made out of three key feature components, expression sets, lookup tables, and decision explainer. I won't go into details for these. I'll be making another video for these components in the future, so stay tuned. This is what an example of a decision matrix looks like. A decision matrix basically matches the input values to a table row and returns output values of the row. So this is a service level agreement decision matrix. For Browns, the retention cost is $6,000 and the rate is 0 0.6. And it's different uh, for different uh, service level agreement levels. So you can call decision matrix directly inside expression sets or use decision matrix as a standalone tool. So this is what a simple expression set looks like. An expression set is basically a series of rules you create with expression set elements. These are the add elements that are available. These, em these elements forms a logical step that runs sequentially. So in this expression set, it takes the lookup table as a reference. This lookup table is what we've looked at before. It's the service level agreement lookup table. Based on this lookup table, it performs calculations to work out the CLV, the customer lifetime value. It then sums up all the CLVs and stores that into an output variable. And this can be used in your flow or OMI script or a third party tool. We can actually run a quick simulation of this expression set. So if we enter the annual income, and the SLA will go for gold. We'll be able to work out the CLV value. And here it gives you a breakdown of uh, the variable numbers. Uh, for example, we've entered gold as the SLA. And here it gives you the process um, it uses to work out the final uh, CLA value. Now moving on to developer experience layer. So this layer is an application lifecycle layer of tools 
for developers to manage and move Omni Studio component changes between environments. It's very similar to a warehouse where all your recipes are kept. So there are two tools that you can use to move metadata around. You have the IDX build tool and IDX workbench. IDX build tool is a command line automation tool that packages and migrates Omni Studio data pack in a source control format. A IDX workbench is a desk desktop application that enables developers to migrate data packs and sell source metadata from one org to another or from an org to a Git repository. So this is a more user-friendly tool and you don't need to use the command line, command line for it. So the IDX build tool is very similar to a secret recipe in the cafe where you need to use the command line interface and IDX workbench is similar to a written recipe because it's more user-friendly and easier to access and see. This is what IDX workbench, the desktop app looks like. So you can select source, target, use process profiler tools, version compare and test console, which basically allows you to run test procedures and view Gantt charts of their step-by-step -step performance. So a test procedure is basically an integration procedure that performs a unit test of almost anything an integration procedure can invoke, such as a data raptor, a calculation matrix, an apex class, or even another integration procedure. So I won't spend too much time covering how to use ID Workbench. I'll be covering this in another video. So in terms of deployment, in addition to IDX build tool or IDX workbench or simple Omni Studio components, you can actually directly import and also export uh, the JSON by clicking on this button here. A window will pop up and you would be able to drag and drop a data pack. Besides that, you can also deploy Omni Studio components using SFDX. Again, we'll be covering that in a separate video. And there you have it, a taste of Omni Studio. So I hope you found this cafe analogy helpful. If you find this helpful or have come up with your own analogy, please feel free to leave it in the comments below as it can help other people to learn Omni Studio as well. So I'll be making more videos going over how we can configure these tools in the upcoming weeks. So please like and subscribe as it can help YouTube algorithm to get the content out there. All the Omni Studio related videos will be in a playlist that's in the description below. And see you next time.